On this episode, we head back and find some new storm damage has made a bit of a mess. I hang out with some of the rowdy locals, and as our region of BC is rocked by severe wildfires, we begin to wonder if this was a huge mistake. All that and more coming up on this episode. Hi, we're Matt and Mouse and we live on the west coast of Canada. We moved here about 20 years ago, and like many people, we've had our ups and downs over the years, but we've loved every minute of being here. When the pandemic hit, we decided that now is the time to commit to our future plans, have a dream cabin in the woods, and just go for it. This is our story. Okay, in the last episode, we uh, we were showing you how we were shut down by COVID and we couldn't really travel anywhere. We had our regional travel restrictions and everybody was pinned down under penalty of... Slap on the wrist and a fine. Yeah, not, not a lot really. But, and we were so, so excited to try and get out and try and get back to the property and start planning things out. But it didn't really happen that way. Um, Those were dark, dark times. Yeah. Uh, as the travel restrictions finally got lifted, uh, there was a bit of a heat wave in BC, which then contributed to a number of forest fires, a whole lot of forest fires. In fact, I think at one point there was over 200 out of control fires burning. Sounds Something like, like <laughs> it was. It was a lot. It was a lot. British Columbia is under a state of emergency as wildfires continue to grow and new fires keep flaring up. As of this morning, nearly 300 fires are burning across the province. An evacuation alert has recently been issued by the Caribou Regional District in the province's south. The alert is currently in effect for the Flat Lake area north of Kamloops. Yep, looked like we just got ourselves a nice piece of dream property. Slap bang in the middle of... Forest Fire Central. The whole hillside's gone. By 12.30, officials made the call for a tactical evacuation. So it took probably uh, at least another month or so for some really brave people starting to get these fires under control. Um, and it's, I don't know, it finally got to the point where we're feeling comfortable enough to travel. Yeah, it's, out, it, it was so crazy though. and. My hat is off to all the amazing people that fight these fires. They do it every summer anyway, but last mm. summer was just a blinder of a just insane, what with the heat dome and and everything and the tragedies that, we, that yeah. followed. It was just horrendous. Yeah, it was a really bad year. Bad year. Luckily, there is a BC website you can go to and it actually maps out where all the fires are and um, which areas are affected and which areas have been evacuated, which really helped. So when we felt uh, more comfortable, we, we head back up there and... It did chip make us change our priorities a lot too, going back yeah. up, because they made us think we need to make our property more fire smart. Yeah. Um, so that's another, that's kind of a change in direction with what we were going to do. Yeah. Especially when you have a piece of land that's got a lot of trees on it to start thinking about that kind of stuff. some places where we pulled the trees out. It's gonna come around here like this, down here. And this is gonna come down to an opening. Now we can kind of leave the trail off and hang out and stuff. Like so, you see those branches that were there yesterday? 
Good old things gone. It's been cleaned up. We're gonna come around here and then back out up the driveway. So that was today. Not as much as the other day, but a lot of tree uh, trimming and pruning with the branches, which means standing on the back of the truck, which is a bit of a pain. But anyway, so that's done. Now, even while we were there, um, there were fires in the vicinity. I think at one point the closest fire was about 40 kilometers away. Uh, and there's a lot of smoke drifting through with, uh, you know, really affecting the air quality. Um, you could smell it too. You could smell it, you could taste it. I mean, there were some days it was relatively clear, but when the wind turned, uh, blew the smoke towards where we were, it was, it was pretty bad. All right, end of day two. You can see the smoke is starting to come in again. This afternoon, it's about four o'clock-ish, somewhere on there. So originally, I went up on my own for the first few days. Um, I took the trail out there and we, I, well, I, I kind of camped out and did a bit of cleaning, a bit of tidying up. And then uh, Mouse and the kids joined me yeah. a few days later. We had to stay behind for a bit because one of my kids had signed up for some um, a summer vegetable program because it was all about getting extra high school credit. She'll take extra high school credits wherever she can. And she thought this would be a great idea. And apparently and she was excited by bringing free vegetables home too. So, so because she'd signed up for that, it meant I had to stay behind and take her to that. Mm -hmm. um, that plus, you know, there's only so much time teenagers will tolerate the grunt work that we were gonna make them do. So. And no Wi-Fi. There was no Wi-Fi, so, you know, we, oh, yeah. we couldn't push it for too long. <laughs> you might have done them good. But while they were there, they actually helped out. It was great. They got to chop a few trees down and uh, help clean up some of the, um, the branches and the, the, uh, the, the, the stuff that was on the floor, all the tinder and stuff. So, so that was good. So it was a really cool camping trip, really. Yeah, it was, it was like a mini vacation. Kind of, even though we had work to do and we were up to our ears in grass and ants <laughs> and and cutting stuff, and it was really hot. Yeah. Um, but we did have some fun. The kids had some fun in the lake, and it was our annual camping trip. And so yeah, it was a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, kind of really enjoyed it. And it left us with a massive checklist of more and more things to do. <laughs> Big long idea list. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's the bigger and new wider gate so that big stuff can come in. Uh, um, at Thanksgiving weekend, we kind of went back up there and uh, uh, it was really sort of got to meet a couple of contractors that we'd met. Um, we wanted to try and get some ideas uh, of things that they could do for us uh, around tree clearing and driveway access and stuff like that that they could just help us out with. Be honest, it's because you just wanted to go back up there too. I mean, it's a long way to go for a day trip, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so. and it was really nice because it was just the perfect temperature up there and yeah. and no bugs. <laughs> and it was just so peaceful and beautiful. Hi, we're here at the property. Don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button. <laughs> Go on. All right. Here we're at the lake, the lake end of the property. So this is the view from the what would be the front or back garden of the house eventually.
beautiful view across the lake. This is a million dollar view, so if you want to buy it, let me know. I'll send you a postcard. And deep down there is the, is the beach area. It's a rocky beach, beautiful beach. It's got some rocks. It's the best rocks on a rocky beach you've ever seen. Best beach ever. And it's got water because it's on the lake. You may notice some trees on the ground here. They came with the property. They were free. They were, they were bought in the bargain. Parkour! Oh, hang on. What happened the last time you did parkour, Mandy? I've never done parkour. No. I wasn't actually even on the tree at that point. That was flat ground. <laughs> Here we have our bare feet. Yeah, that does concern me. You want to see the bones? The animal bones? 20 years ago, the great moose of the caribou wandered through and finally passed away here. These are sacred bones, we can't disturb them. Jill knows all about bones, but we don't want to boil those down because they're old. Will you stop moving? Just move. Hmm. We'll be the parking area with the workshop, I think, over here. We've got a garage over that side. And yeah, garage over there. Garage house and a workshop at the opposite side. More trees. That we have to clean up. You see it as more trees for stuff and I see it as more trees we have to clear more trees we have to clear up. And these are going to be more trees that we have to clear up. Because they're tagged to go. Driveway over to the left. With the sarlacc pit. The sarlacc pit. It's kind of weird and spongy here. We think it was an old tree root system and the tree is long gone. But <laughs> we don't actually know. Coming <laughs> for dramatic effect. Mm. On the way back, we decided to do a few touristy things and we stopped in at a place called Alexandra Bridge. Yeah, I've seen so many photographers um, show off photos of it on inst on the Instas. Hmm. So many people have had like photo shoots there and all that. And I'm like, I don't know where that bridge is. And I've always wanted to go see it. I didn't realize it was where it was. So yeah, just off Highway 1 in the canyon. Yeah, I just nearly tripped again. <laughs> Don't look at me, look where you're going. <laughs> Selfie video.
a little bit. Selfie video! So first year of, this kind of rounds off our first year of land ownership and it was quite the first year. Yeah, we didn't really do much, I mean. We took, we put a couple of posts up yeah, and posts. mowed some grass and fixed the fence. took a yeah. tree down or two and mm. had a lot of ideas. Yeah. But in our defence. It was a very eventful year. Yeah, yeah. between covid again and the heat dome and the forest fires and the chaos that ensued with highway one which was our main avenue up there and the horrendous like fire at Lytton and yeah uh, it, yeah it's shocking we got done what we got done at all yeah so at that point we were thinking oh we're done for the year right no. Water rushes underneath a now completely severed section of the Coquihalla Highway. Look at this bridge. There's nothing left of it. The busiest route through BC's mountains is now impossible to pass. To make matters worse, all rail service has also been impacted by damage to the line. No trains are coming to or from the Port of Vancouver. And that's creating concern in Abbotsford, a community underwater and also cut off. Says it's possible Highway 3 will be open by the end of the weekend, but the Coquihalla and Highway 1 will take longer. Our maintenance contractors have gathered all the heavy equipment they can. They are ready to clear roads. They are waiting for the signal of when it is safe to do so. But for many stuck in limbo because of this destruction, time is not on their side. Renee Filipponi, CBC News, Vancouver. Hey, thanks for joining us on this episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you didn't, what's wrong with you? How can you not enjoy this? Co no, don't. Don't do that. No. See you next time.